So this is the video solution for the problem part of uh, problem set three. So this is going to consist of both uh, number six with a swimmer in a river uh, and number seven forces on a block. So this week we did vector components um, and these two problems both apply those heavily. So if this is our river, doing problem six part A, the first problem, A, asks you what angle should the swimmer cross at in order to make it to the other side in the shortest amount of time. So if we have our velocity of our current traveling that way, and we have the swimmer, the velocity of the swimmer S at an angle of theta, well, we remember from, from the problem that we did in class about the lake that the only thing we're interested in here is the y velocity of the swimmer. And the current, the velocity of the current, does not contribute at all to the y velocity of the river, right? If I have, you know, if I add those two vectors together, this is my v vector and s. The add the uh, let's see, the y component of our s vector is this here. This is the y component. This is the x component. And if I draw my resultant vector, which looks like this it still has the exact same y component. The only thing that changes is that its x component is now much longer. So the y component doesn't change, which means when we're interested in the amount of time it takes to cross the river, we can completely ignore the current because it doesn't change anything. So if I want to know, well, what's the quickest way to cross the river, um, I want to do it such that it maximizes the y component of the swimmer's velocity. So when it's like this, at, let's say this is like 45 degrees, well, I can make this y component greater, because some of this vector is contributing to the x direction. So the optimal solution is if he swim, swims straight across with a theta equals 90 degrees, because then I have no x component and the entire vector is going in the y direction. So your answer to part A is that theta is equal to 90 degrees. Part B asks a slightly different question. This time B asks, well, what, uh, what angle should I travel at if I want to swim straight across? Because here, our swimmer is straight swimming, uh, trying to swim straight, but the velocity of the current is going to sweep him downstream, so his actual path will look, more, will look like that. This time, we want to know what path, what angle should the swimmer swim at such that uh, he ends up going directly across. And in order to do that, well, people usually have an intuition. If the velocity of the river the current is traveling to the right, and the swimmer has to swim some way such that he'll go straight, most people realize you have to swim into the current. So I'm going to call, so this angle is theta. We want to swim into the current. But the problem is, well, how do we get straight across? There has to be some special angle where this, these two things together will produce a vector that looks like that, and it goes straight across. And uh, Indeed, what we're trying to do when we get this vector is this vector has only a y component. It has no x component. So what you want is for the x components of these two vectors to cancel out. So the x component of this vector, the x, is simply equal to v because it's the entire thing. The x component of this vector, well, let's see, we have uh, something that looks like this, where this angle here is 180 minus theta. And that's from our rules of geometry. This whole thing is 180. That's theta, so that means that's 180 minus theta. Um, so the x component is going to be this one. So uh, Sx in this scenario is equal to, um, we're going to have uh, S times the cosine of 180 minus theta. So we want these two things to be equal to each other, equal and opposite, right? So we're going to say that V is equal to S times the cosine of 180 minus theta, and we're going to solve for theta. What angle will give it, uh, what angle will produce a uh, X component that is equal to the X component velocity, but canceling it out. So we're going to divide by S, so we have V divided by S is equal to the cosine of 180 minus theta. Then we're going to take the inverse cosine of both sides, so we have the inverse cosine of V over S, is equal to 180 minus theta, which means that theta, if we subtract 180 and then multiply by negative 1 to get rid of the negative sign, we're going to have that theta is equal to, uh, so subtract 180, so we have cosine negative 1 minus 180, 
and then we flip the sine, so it's going to be equal to 180 degrees minus the inverse cosine of V over S. And this is the angle he has to travel at in order to go straight across the river. And again, this is very doable with the, uh, with the vector components and the type of uh, math that we, uh, that we have. Uh, the difficult part is just kind of framing it in such a way as the, the problem solving skills that we're going to be working on. Um, the difficult part is realizing that, oh, I know I want the x components to cancel, and I have to represent that mathematically with this equation. Um, and the rest is, is just algebra. So that's part B. Now let's do part C. Part C is a little bit more involved. So part C says we have our river, and I'm going to say the river has a distance of d. That's given to you in the problem. The current is still v to the right, and the swimmer is crossing uh, velocity of s uh, at an angle of theta. So part C says, suppose the distance across the river is d. If the swimmer travels at an angle of theta with respect to the direction of the river, um, how long will it take to get to the other side? So that's the first part. So we want to know time, t. That's what we're being asked for. So in order to find t, we have to use the equation. So time, uh, rearranging the equation for velocity, uh, time is equal to, we have uh, s, sorry, d over s. All right? So, however, this is slightly misleading because if we do this, uh, this s here, this is an s at an angle. And what we actually want is we want to know how long it takes him to get only to the other side. Um, we don't actually interested in the, the entire distance he travels. Um, so we don't care where he ends up on the shore of this river, only that he gets there at some point and how long does that take. So the only relevant thing here is his y velocity. That's going to be the thing that matters. So he's going to, and this again, this has to do with uh, what we did with the lake problem, right? Regardless of this velocity here, the rate at which he moves across and changes his y coordinate is going to be a function of the y velocity. So this equation is more accurately going to be d over sy. So sy, that's going to be here, that's going to be s sine theta, which means that the amount of time it takes him to cross the river is equal to d divided by s times the sine of theta. And that's your answer for part one. Part two asks, how far downstream will the swimmer land? Answer this, these questions only for the case where zero is less than theta, is less than 90, so between 90 and theta is zero. So now we're interested in, what is this distance, which we'll call dx? The, if you start here, how much does his x-coordinate change by the time he gets to the river? So this time we are interested in how far downstream he lands. So in order to do this, we now have slightly different variables, but using the same equation. So now we want, we have t equals d over s, we want d. We now have t. The amount of time he's swimming is given, we solve for right here. And now instead of the y component, we're interested in the x component of the swimmer's velocity. Um, and uh, the reason for that is because that's going to be what moves him sideways. The y component has nothing to do with how far he ends up downstream. So this is slightly different because here, the velocity of the river's current is also pushing him, because this is entirely in the, uh, in the x direction. So what we're going to have to do is say that his total uh, x velocity, which I'll just write x velocity, I guess, is equal to the sum of s cosine theta, which is how much the swimmer is contributing, the side is uh, s times cosine of theta, plus the velocity of the river that it's adding to his x-velocity. So uh, setting this up, we know our time is d over s times the sine of theta, uh, and that's equal to dx, which you want to solve for, divided by x-velocity, which is s times cosine of theta plus v. So solving for dx, we have dx is equal to s times the cosine of theta plus v, all being multiplied by d divided by s times sine theta. And that's how far down the river he ends up if the swimmer is traveling with a velocity of s at an angle of theta through a river with a current of b. That is d, a distance of dy. So that's problem uh, six. As you can see, this problem is, is certainly it's challenging. It's doable with uh, the math that you have, but it's very challenging because it requires a lot of setup. You'll find that a lot of physics problems, uh, you know, once you can set up the problem properly, 
the rest is really easy. Um, so we're going to do some more work on developing problem-solving skills uh, as the year progresses.